Hello YouTube. Uh, in this video I want to show you how I solved a little problem that I had with my with my stereo in my 96 Set J Grand Cherokee. I'm not sure if this applies to actually all Set J models, but it does work on some. What my problem was is the following. I've never had any good signal with my stereo and when I told my buddy about this he said oh yeah friend of mine same car same truck same Jeep whatever he had the same problem and he said he bought a new antenna and put it in and it was all fine by then so all happy as I was I ordered the same antenna or well I let my buddy order it for me and that antenna actually fits this um, this form of the fender from the set J. So I spent 20 bucks on this thing and when my friend told me he got it I was doing some researching on the internet and I had to find out that there is a connector on some of these set J's in the, the cable of the antenna. And this connector is on the passenger side, down here, underneath this cover. And all you gotta do to take this out is you remove this little plastic cover whatsoever. And well, then there's two screws. There's a Phillips screw up here and another one down here. And this little metal plate which you get removed too. Now I'm just gonna get some screwdrivers one moment. Yes, all right, here you go. Whoop, yes. <clears throat> By the way, as you can probably tell, I'm somewhat sick. I've been struggling with a nasty little cold. Wasted my weekend laying around in the bed and whatnot, but, well, what you wanna do? That's life. So you take out these Phillips screws down here. I hope you can actually see this. If not, so I'm sorry, I'm using my GoPro right now, which has got no screen, so I can't actually tell what you can see. So I just hope my camera is pointing out right. So once you get these two Phillips screws removed, again, there's one down here, one up here. You just gotta take that little metal plate thingy out, which I did with a flathead screwdriver. You just get to pop it out carefully, and that's how you do it. You might spin it out too, because it's sitting on a kind of bolt thing. Once you get all this stuff out, you can actually take this cover out. You now you just push it toward you, take it around all these things and, you know, rub it out. Just like so. Be careful on this old plastic. And then, down here, you just pull this, and there's the connector, which connects the antenna cable that goes to the radio with the one that comes from the antenna. And this thing was wrapped in some kind of tape and foam, whatever stuff, which kind of all fell apart and a little spring inside of this connector caused them to split apart actually and that's why I could never get any signal from any station. So I cleaned this all up, uh, this all up yes, and took all this crap away, just put it all together once I had it cleaned up I put this hose clamp around it so it wouldn't split apart again and I have perfectly fine radio signal by now. So I just put this all back in here, put the cover back on, same way you put it off, but you took it off whatsoever. First rear, then the front, put it all in. Uh, where's the clamp? There's the clamp. Put the clamp back in. Well, in case that's possible. 
the pass, like so. And put the screws back in. And you're good to go. That's what helped me. I didn't put the new antenna in, by the way. My only problem was this goddamn little connector. Oh, come on. And this saved me some bucks because we sent back the antenna once it actually arrived. And I got my 20 bucks back. And I saved quite some work, quite some time. Because, you know, you will have to kind of take your fender apart to actually get that antenna out and replace it. And you're going to have to fuck around with the cable, which goes through the body somewhere in this area and I just haven't had to do all this crap. Now we've got this cable right here which isn't much like it but let's shove this in like so. Alright, tighten these up, not too tight because you don't want to crack anything. Put the cover back on and you're good to go. Just like so. Well, as you can probably hear, I'm gonna show you. I have perfect signal right now. It's awesome, yeah. Great quality, all that. Aftermarket radio. The previous owner took the original out, but well. I'm somewhat sad about it. This Infinity Gold system isn't all that bad. It's not bad at all. I have the stock speakers, the stock uh, amplifier underneath the rear seats and all that. But someone took the radio out. I would like to know how good the actual radio in this Jeep is, but well, that's what it is like. All right. I hope this will actually help you if you're having the same problem. Uh, another question to the other Jeep set J owners is, I do have a problem with the outside of my front tires veering pretty badly. You know, I, I turned them around, so the inside is now actually out. You can see it's pretty much worn. I turned around and now this side's gonna be fucked up soon. Uh, I think it's because of the permanent four-wheel drive, of the all-time four-wheel drive. Because when you when you turn your steering wheel all the way to the right or to the left, your your front tires they actually tilt to the outside or well to the inside of the turn you're you're doing, and with the permanent four-wheel drive I think that's why why it actually kind of eats my tires like that just want to know if you guys have the same problem and if you have any idea what to do about it other than swap another part-time four-wheel drive transfer case into this thing like a 242 from a Cherokee or I don't know what all right thanks for watching see you